Hey everybody, guess who's craving caramel apples again? Me. I'm actually not craving caramel apples that bad. I just like, they remind me of fall. And since I can't go to a pumpkin patch because they aren't open yet, and there's not really any fall stuff open really, except for like a couple aisles at the craft store. I need to get into the fall spirit. And I feel like caramel apples are very fall to me. So I have a bag of Werther's Originals Chewy Caramels, which remind me of old ladies. I'm gonna put them in a microwave bowl with a couple tablespoons of milk and just put them all over these apples. Let's do it. All right, we've got our caramels and some cream. I'm just gonna melt these in the microwave. I know it's not like as good as if I did it on the stove, but I'm tired, don't cover me. Putting the caramel on the apple. It's hardening so fast. This one's gonna be so ugly. Drip down, my child. It smells so good. It smells so good. I have enough for like half a caramel apple left. Okay. Yeah, they're good. You did it. The top's not done, but it's cute. Who needs a top? Okay. Ooh, gorgeous. Simply gorgeous. So out of breath from kneeling down to microwave the chocolate and then standing back up. <laughs> so I microwave some add chocolate and I'm gonna drizzle that onto these. And I could put like sprinkles and cute things on it, but <laughs> stuck. Ooh, chunky. Cute. <sighs> Cuter, but this is what we got for now. That's kind of cute, right? That's really just cute. Just like a little drizz. I had no idea these were so quick and easy to make. Yeah. I thought it was like a whole process. Look at that. Disneyland who? Come on, girl. That looks very delicious. Last one. Look at those. Caramel apples. Awesome. Hello. Delicious treats for the fall. Now I have to go to therapy. <laughs> well, I'm an idiot. I forgot to put the caramel apples back in the fridge to like harden. I set them on the counter. And all the caramel and all the chocolate like slid down to the bottom. <laughs> so I went to therapy and I like finished therapy and I like had a very emotional session. And I was like, I just want a caramel apple. And I came out and I was like, they all got ruined. So I'm setting them in these cups to hopefully let the caramel and chocolate drip back down and then put them in the fridge. See, as you can see, all the chocolate and all the caramel is the bottom of the apple. <laughs> I'm an idiot. Anyway, that's all. So Corey just sent me a TikTok of Megan Hilty explaining a photo of me, her, Stephanie J. Block, Annalie Ashford, and Ariana Grande. I've seen a few people comment on this photo of us and say like, what is this? How did this happen? When did this happen? I think it's very funny because they're just at a Miranda Sings show. <laughs> That's what Megan says in her TikTok. She's like, we all just went to see a Miranda Sings show. But um, what she didn't explain is that Ariana and Annalie Ashford actually performed with me that night. That's so nuts to me because they're both obviously insanely famous now. And I'm actually watching the Monica Lewinsky show thing, that the new show that um, just started about like Monica Lewinsky and all that scandal. And Annalie Ashford is in it and she is my favorite part. She is so good. I think Annalie is like one of the most incredible actresses ever. Like she's so funny, she's so good. And I just like have loved watching her career just completely explode. She's just so amazing. I'm certain she does not remember me. <laughs> but anyway, after I saw this TikTok of Megan's, I was like, oh my gosh, I wanna go back and see if I can find the footage. So I have footage of me performing with Annalie and with Ariana. So I thought I would show a little bit of that. I can't show the singing part because this video will get taken down or like demonetized or whatever. And what I used to do back in the day during that time was I would message Broadway performers on Facebook <laughs> and ask them to perform with me. I'm not kidding. So I did that. And then I also sometimes would meet them at Birdland Jazz Club or at like some cabaret, like open mic cabarets in New York City or, you know, dinner parties with friends or whatever. I would meet these Broadway performers. We get to talking and I would just be like, hey, I have a show next week. Like, do you want to be in it with me? We can just sing a duet. We can sing whatever you want. And like, I'll give you a, a fake like bad voice lesson, it'll be fun. And the Broadway community is one of the most like loving, supportive, kind, amazing communities in the world. And somehow, shockingly, all these celebrities would always say yes. Like it was very rare that they would say no. And so there's so many videos of Miranda Sings performing with huge like Broadway stars.
bars from like 10 years ago. Yeah, it was really fun. I can't even, like people sometimes ask like, who else did you perform with in the Broadway community? I'm like, I don't even remember. Like, um, I'm sure I'll forget like a million, but like off the top of my head, I performed with Christopher Sieber, who's amazing. I was like fangirling over him because he was in a Mary Kay and Ashley TV show that I really, really liked, so. I performed with him. I performed with John Tartaglia, who I love, Adam Pascal, Andrew Reynolds, Shoshana Bean, Natalie Weiss, Audrey Call, obviously. I mean, there's a bunch, I just can't remember them. I don't know. It was like every month it was someone different. It was always really fun. So that was like the beginning of Miranda was like just me performing with other Broadway performers. And it was like a total dream come true. There's a lot of random videos of me performing with celebrities that certainly don't even know who I am anymore. I have to sneeze. <laughs> oh, I just peed so much. Oh, <gasps> there's pee on the couch. <laughs> I see all these people I performed with, they're all like living their lives on like the best TV shows, selling records all over the world, so famous, and I'm just like peeing myself. Anyways, um, I've gotta clean up the pee. Welcome to pregnancy. I'm not doing too great. This is hard. I'm so uncomfortable. I'm sorry, I can't be like peppy and positive. I, sometimes I'm okay, and sometimes I'm like, can handle it and have a good attitude. And I feel like I even have like a good attitude right now. Like I know that like, it's, this isn't gonna last forever and it's all gonna be worth it. Oh, man, I'm so uncomfortable. I'm in so much pain. I feel claustrophobic in my own body. I just wanna rip off my own skin. I'm not doing good. No clothes are comfortable. No way to sit is comfortable. No way to lay down is comfortable. No way to walk is comfortable. Everything hurts. Eric and I were trying to watch TV and I finally just said like, I just need to go upstairs. Like, I just want to sleep because at least when I'm sleeping, like if I'm able to sleep, like in my dreams, I'm not pregnant sometimes. <laughs> that sounds so dramatic. I don't want it to sound like I'm ungrateful that I'm pregnant. I'm so grateful and I'm so excited. And I feel so lucky that it's twins and we have a couple more months left. Oh my God, I am so uncomfortable. I can't do anything. I can't, I just try to walk anywhere and I can't breathe and it hurts. You'd think I'd be able to be like, oh, I'll just take it easy for the next few months. Like this is my excuse to just lay on the couch and do nothing and just watch movies. And but I, that's uncomfortable. Like it's uncomfortable for me to lay on the couch. It's uncomfortable for me to just sit on the couch. There is nothing, like I'm just, I just want to be asleep until it's over. So to everyone else out there who has miserable pregnancies, oh. Join the club, I feel you. Thank you for talking about it so I don't feel alone. It makes me feel less guilty for being miserable and vocalizing it. I feel so annoying talking about it. One good thing I realized is that I used to only wear crop tops before I got pregnant. And I've been trying to find maternity shirts that are cute. That does not exist. There's not cute maternity shirts, they're all ugly. But I was like, why don't I just wear my crop tops? Like, now nothing's on my stomach are bothering me. So I'm just gonna wear crop tops. <laughs> I don't go anywhere, so no one has to see it, but you guys, if you watch. I just thought I need to close out the vlog, but this is where I'm at right now. And I'm okay, like, I feel like I am in a good headspace. I'm just, like, claustrophobic in my own body. Like, I just, I'm like, I just want a break from it. I just want to forget that I'm pregnant for a minute. I am fine. I'm not looking for sympathy or pity or whatever. I'm not even trying to have a pity party. I'm just, this is just how I feel right now. And um, I'm in a lot of pain. Sometimes I just hit my breaking point. And I've seen comments from a lot of you guys who suffer from like chronic pain and chronic illnesses. And you say that like, it sounds like that. And I'm not comparing it to that at all. This is nothing like that. I'm not saying that it's the same, but I just want to say it makes my heart ache for those people. I feel so bad that people have to feel this feeling of like being trapped in like a body that's like broken and not having relief from it and never getting a break from it and feeling claustrophobic in your own body like all that like the fact that there are people out there who feel this way not pregnant you are so strong and amazing and my heart goes out to you and I see those comments and they always just break my heart because I am aware that this feeling will end and I'll get to have two babies at the end of it. 
like I'm very aware of that but like I still have my breaking points when it's been like a whole day of not just a whole day months of just like constant pain and symptoms and something wrong and like it never ends and I just feel obnoxious I feel like a broken record it's just constant so I just feel annoying and um, anyway I just need to go to bed so I'm gonna go take a bath and go to bed and hopefully tomorrow will be a better day than today as far as pain goes. My back hurts, my shoulder hurts because that fall that I did down the stairs. Do you see my bruise? Okay, you're gonna see me in my bra for a minute. Watch out. Check it out. It's getting better or worse? I think it's getting better. There's a huge bruise on my butt too. But like my arm is super sore from that and my shoulder hurts from that and my butt hurts from the bruise and my tailbone, like landing on my tailbone, so that's painful. And then my pelvic bone every day that pelvic bone pain just gets worse and worse and I'm getting slower and slower when I'm walking it's getting harder and harder to breathe it just feels like there's no room in there for them so like there's no way to sit comfortably there's no way to lay come everything is just so painful it's a little overwhelming to think like oh it's gonna get worse I know I can do it and I know I'll be fine I'm just sometimes I need to cry about it because it's just really hard and I'm so envious and happy for all the women who it's not like this for but oh man for me it's hard and I know that there are a lot of other people out there who get pregnant and it's hard. <sighs> I'm out of breath. <laughs> Sorry, this is so such a downer. Look at this pig. I mean, I just feel like it's just the most absurd stomach. It just feels like so huge. <laughs> and I just don't know where else it's gonna go. There's no more room. And it's just getting heavier and heavier and further out. Like it's like, I feel like I'd have to like pick it up to walk around. It's, I feel like it like grows so much every day and every day there's a new problem. But the good news is Flynn is really cute. So instead of leaving you guys on a sour, sad pity party note, this morning Flynn, I'm gonna leave you on a cute note with Flynn. Cause this morning Flynn came in the office and Corey and I were in here and he said, I wanna do truck of the day, which is something we do on the podcast sometimes what just only when he asks for it but like the podcast stuff wasn't set up and we weren't downstairs so I was like I have a little microphone in here like we just did like a silly little impromptu like truck of the day in here this morning and he was just really cute in it so I'm gonna show you guys some of that footage to end on a cute happy note and tomorrow we start over and get through another day already 25 weeks I'm getting there I can do it I'm just miserable I love you guys here's Flynn being cute hello Hey, buddy. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Uh, so, uh, my trick of the day is trucks. Ooh, I love a good truck. What color? It's Beverly. Beverly? No, Beverly. Bubbly. No, Beverly. Liberty. Beverly. Her? Yeah, this one. Ooh, this is the truck of the day, now everyone. Hold your mic up to your mouth. Oh, yeah. huh? oh, ba 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 go. Check it the day, Mama. That's great. Huh, I got my microphone. Yeah, you do. Hello, Flynn's truck of the day. Check it out. Microphones. So you can relax, that's the name of our podcast.